Good morning or good afternoon, whenever it is that you are viewing this, but we have arrived. Uh, this day, Palm Sunday, is our transition into Holy Week. Uh, and after a very long and unusual Lent, uh, we find ourselves here uh, at, the, at the beginning of Holy Week. And this is going to be a Holy Week unlike any that we've experienced before. Uh, and I'd like us to think not just about uh, what is lost by us not being able to come together, uh, but of the opportunity. And you'll notice that there's a, a distinct difference in this particular service. Palm Sunday usually uh, ends uh, with us transitioning from that triumphant entry into Jerusalem uh, through the Passion, acknowledging that a lot of us uh, don't gather again until Easter Day. Uh, but uh, we're encouraging you to walk through all of the days of Holy Week. Uh, and to that end, uh, you hopefully have received by this point uh, a bulletin uh, or a packet of our Holy Week liturgies. And if you haven't, I encourage you to uh, reach out to us so that we can get you a copy or go on the parish website. Uh, but it uh, is a guide uh, both to the liturgies uh, that we will be offering uh, on, online, but also to things that you can do in your own household. Uh, and to begin this liturgy, if you haven't done so already, uh, you still have the ability to press pause uh, and to go and gather uh, a native branch, uh, realizing that, uh, that, that the palms would have been native branches to the people in Jerusalem and that we are going to make our Palm Sunday with our own native branches. So uh, you can go and get that before the service begins. I also want you to, uh, to consider the fact that the majority of the funds that we give away, uh, the money that goes straight to outreach is collected during this Holy Week. And uh, if there is a time uh, where uh, there is a more desperate need for our care and our attention uh, and our resources to go to those, uh, uh, those on the margins, this is it. So uh, whether or not you give generously to the church online, uh, uh, making it known that this is your uh, Holy Week offering uh, to go to, to servant ministries, uh, or you give to one of the organizations that we've highlighted uh, in our weekly, uh, our weekly news, we encourage you to give generously this Holy Week uh, to the service of others. Uh, it is certainly in the spirit of, um, of, of what Christ has, uh, uh, as a servant, has offered uh, to all of us. Uh, so please uh, give very, very generously. And also uh, continue to reach out to one another. I have been touched deeply by the stories uh, of, of folks uh, just uh, dropping a line uh, or checking in uh, and seeing if there's any needs uh, to each one of uh, the members of, of the congregation, continue to do so. Uh, if somebody uh, comes across your mind, uh, don't let it end there. Uh, go find their phone number, give them a call, see if they need a grocery run or, or just a, a voice on a, a, the other end of a line. Uh, but it has been uh, amazing the way that uh, the church hasn't just been able to maintain being church, uh, but has shown more fully what being church is during this season of isolation. Uh, so with that, I encourage you to, uh, to dig deeply um, into this season, into this week that's ahead of us. Uh, look through that, uh, that packet uh, before the liturgies come uh, and think how you might walk a little bit more intentionally and a little bit more deeply uh, through this Holy Week. And we'll begin today with prayer. So let us pray. Most loving God, we give you thanks for this week, for the way that we understand your love, your presence with us, the depth of the incarnation, the sacrifices that you make on our behalf, the fact that there is nothing, nothing that you wouldn't do for us. And that as we come out the other end of this week, that we realize that there is a power in that love, in that sacrifice, that is beyond anything this world can do. Help us as we walk through this week to feel your presence, but to gain greater assurance of that hope that we'll celebrate on Easter. Reach out to those that need special awareness of your love, that need to know that you're with them in their loneliness and their isolation. Be with our leaders. Be with the church, that we might be a lighthouse, 
that we might proclaim the events of this week boldly and in new ways and touch the hearts of new and existing members of your body. Be with those in our parish family that need special prayers. Be with all those whose needs are known to you alone. We also offer up all the prayers that sit on our hearts. Give them voice. I'll close with a prayer for this particular season in our common life. O oh God, in our global distress, we pray earnestly to you. God, our sanctuary, gather us when separated into your presence. God, our physician, heal those who have contracted the virus. God, our comforter, embrace all who mourn the dead. God, our homeland, mother all who are quarantined. God, our friend, accompany all who are alone or afraid. God, our guardian, protect physicians and nurses. God, our hope, assist researchers searching for a vaccine God, our mighty fortress, preserve our societies from devastation. God, our governor, guide the leaders of nations towards wise policies. God of everlasting arms, in you we live and move and have our being. God, our creator, make once again a world of Sabbath rest. God, our Savior, redeem the suffering world by your cross. God, our light, shine your radiant peace into our darkness. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had re reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. 
A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the passionate love of God made visible in Jesus the Christ permeate our fear and speak truth to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My text is one word. Hosanna. That word, Hosanna, is translated, help, please. That's what the word means. In 33 A.D., in the occupied remote Roman province called Galilee and Israel with its capital, Jerusalem, Passover seasons had become increasingly dangerous. Those darn Jews and their damnable storybook tended to those people tended to read that story, and they would get feisty every year. <clears throat> and they were particularly addicted to one story, those Jews, that story about being liberated from Pharaoh's army, the story of their freedom. And they read it every spring, and the zealots go crazy. It has a way of inflaming them with hope. They tend to plot rebellions. So as much as Pilate hates Jerusalem and its superstitions and its bloody temple with its bloody altar and the bleeding of the Passover lambs year after year, he has to come. He has to walk into that city and make his presence known how he resents it. But he has to do a show of force to keep those Jews from becoming too rowdy. And so his annual procession towards Jerusalem begins. Sunlight gleams from the army, the centurions and their hundreds, as they accompany Pilate on his journey. His, he rides a chariot. The soldiers are so smart in their uniforms. The centurions march by Pilate's side. What a spectacle of power. Jesus. Jesus mounted on the bony back of a skinny donkey, steadies his steps as he too makes a procession to Jerusalem because Jesus, like Pilate, feels he needs to be there. <clears throat> Having achieved some notoriety as a teacher and a healer, 
Jesus is accompanied by those who have seen him in action or heard about him. And they have whipped up their hopes into a desperate frenzy. Hosanna. Hosanna, help please, son of David. Like the Jews in Jerusalem, we Christians in 2020, in the midst of a quarantine, in the midst of an occupation, not by Roman soldiers, but by a virus. This occupation has changed our lives. It has evoked our fears. It has isolated us from those we love and cherish. And it has imprisoned us in our homes, which I must say are not the same as being shut off in real prisons or in nursing homes or in hospitals. But even in this moment of isolation, we Christians are as stubborn as those pesky Jews in Jerusalem. We are stubborn in that we keep telling our story. The old, old story, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Even in quarantine, we stubbornly claim the story, and our, we claim our solidarity with Jesus, who will go to an upper room later on this week, to keep the feast, to keep the feast even in a time of occupation. Hosanna, help, please. I notice with an urgent attention this year, how very much the story, that story we will not let go of, how very much that story is a story that involves fear. Jesus wants to celebrate, and yet Jesus is afraid. Jesus goes to the upper room with his disciples, and later on, Jesus is afraid, so afraid that in his prayer, he sweats blood. Jesus is afraid for the safety of his followers, and yet he will observe that not one of them was lost. Only Jesus was lost. There have been many holy weeks in my past where a personal palpable fear was not my present companion. But this year is different, isn't it, for all of us? for all of us. As I was preparing to preach to all of you today, this day, I did a kind of self-examination and I realized as I reflected on my own experience of fear that as a relatively privil privileged white American male, I've been able to keep fear pretty well locked away in a closet. Now it has burst out from time to time. I was fearful as a 
family member surgery went on longer than I had anticipated. I was somewhat fearful as I was taken by ambulance to a hospital not too long ago. But in those cases, even though the fear was real, it did not persist. What we are living with now is a fear that is persistent, like a virus, it clings. Like the occupation of a Roman governor, it does not appear to be going away very quickly. And even as I own my own fear, I also recognize that the story the story has a power this year and a vividness like no other year before. Fear is a very alert emotion. And it certainly allows me to access parts of the passion story with a heightened attentiveness. Jesus' fear, Jesus' desperate desire that this cup pass from me seems so present to me now. Peter's fear, which allowed him to deny his friendship with Jesus, that the fear in the story is mingling with my own fear. And I can identify, probably like I've never identified with those before who picked up their branches and went on a parade with him who was their hope fleshed out, waving their branches and saying, Jesus, Jesus, help, please. I am hearing Hosanna like I have never heard it before. I am present with the incarnate God that we adore as Jesus Christ who took on our human nature to the depth of our fears. As the old spiritual goes, Nobody knows the sorrows I feel. Nobody knows but Jesus. And this year we can sing, nobody knows the fear I feel. Nobody knows like Jesus. So I have never had a more vivid Palm Sunday. I have <laughs> never had the realization that Hosanna help please, is the only prayer I've got. And yet I also realize that our prayer for help creates solidarities which just weeks ago were easy to ignore. I've been to Italy, and I know they're Chinese, But I feel a solidarity with them in their suffering that is a brand new feeling. I know there are people in Asia and people in Europe, but suddenly it is as if at one moment all of humanity together like we haven't been together before is crying together, Hosanna, help please. That's the summation of everything the governor of New York has said. Help, please. Help, please. People in Washington State and people in Louisiana, people in New York City, all are chanting their Hosanna simultaneously. We're all in the same desperate 
and we Christians, in the midst of our solidarity with an occupied humanity, we cling to the story. We cling to the story like never before. We cling to the story of the son of David straddling the bony back of a donkey and taking into his very self our desperate chance. About 170 years ago, in Fauquier County and throughout the South, during that lengthy, lengthy decades of quarantine called slavery, the enslaved folks had a story that they clung to just as stubbornly as those Jews in Jerusalem, just as desperately as we are now. And their story tended usually to be expressed in song. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Pharaoh's army got drowned, and there is hope. There is hope in the quarantine of slavery. There is hope in the quarantine we're in now because, because God acts. God will act. He will act and is acting through relentless nurses and doctors that show up every day. In relentless first responders who keep driving those ambulances every day. God's relentless love is in the laboratories and in the minds of scientists who are desperately searching for a vaccine and for a cure. And meanwhile, like stubborn Jews in Jerusalem in 33 AD, we cling to a story. We will read parts of it day by day this week. And even as we pray Hosanna, we will also long to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph 
and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. 